hello and welcome to QTV News This Week. I'm Alexa Lowe coming to you from Quincy University to report on the latest COVID-19 campus updates. There are now 11 cases in the Quincy region. However, none of these cases have been affiliated with Quincy University. Following the CDC's recommendation that all individuals wear a mask, Dr. Christine Tracy has asked all students living in the dorms to not leave campus without wearing a mask. That's it for this week's updates, reporting to you from Quincy University, Alexa Lowe, QTV News, Quincy. I'm Taylor King, coming to you from Quincy University's Student Living Center. Seniors are having a tough time about a lot, but to add on to their lobe, job hunting is way more stressful during a pandemic. I had the chance to talk with a senior and Kristen Leeson about what seniors can do about job hunting. A lot of it's the same kind of information I would normally give a student. Like um, you need to be researching your company, looking at mission statements, um, doing a lot of research about what type of a position you want to apply for and what companies in the area that you're in um, would hire someone like you. But the neat thing about, not neat about the pandemic at all, but to use this time wisely, I would say um, a lot of um, preparation. So making sure that you understand what the requirements are for the job that you're applying for and actually having time, a little bit of extra time um, while you're at home to actually sit down and apply. Um, I encourage students to be very organized with this search that they're going to be doing and that they may be applying to more positions than normal because they're having a little extra time to look for those positions. Um, so keep a binder um, of who you've applied to, what that contact person was. Um, I really encourage students to look around at family and friends right now who are also home and use them as resources, um, network with them. Um, a lot of people are working from home and that would allow them to maybe um, have a, a little more time to talk to them. You yourself as a resource, obviously we're not on campus, but through email or they can call you, what can you do to help the seniors out directly? Yeah, um, we're excited to be able to help them in this capacity. Um, Sarah Phillips, my coworker, Alyssa Vitale, who's our grad assistant, um, mm -hmm. we are all on standby to look over resumes. And I think that um, it's a great time to be polishing things up. And maybe you have one, um, and that's awesome. You do, but have, a, have three other people, our office, look at it to make sure that it's exactly how you want it to look. Um, we're also doing virtual virtual interviews, so we can do some mock interviews for practice. Um, you can do three different ones if you want to, so that you're mm -hmm. um, able to practice with three different people. Or if you know that you'll be ha facing a group interview, we can do that. Senior Abby Castanals said that a lot of places are not even hiring and not even having applications open. Also for graphic design students, they don't even have a chance for an art show. An art show is a good place for the seniors to sell their artwork and make a profit and reimburse for their supplies. Reporting from Quincy University Student Living Center, Taylor King, QTV News, Quincy. I'm Alexa Lowe coming to you from Quincy University. The shelter in place has left many altering their work environment. I talked with QTV alum Quincy Feeney to see how she has been working from home. Good morning, Ellen. How are you doing today? I'm good, Quincy. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Quincy Feeney and the rest of her household is now working from home. To maximize space, her work area is now a makeshift office in the basement. Well, about three weeks ago, my company, the U.S. branch, decided to uh, start working from home. Now we've had our Turkey team, Singapore team, and U.S., they're all working from home. Besides hosting meetings online rather than in person, her position and day-to-day -day activity hasn't changed much. She did, however, encounter some minor difficulties she was not expecting. I think the hardest part about working from home is not having the in-office distractions. So not having a coworker to just chat about life with for 10 minutes or not going out for lunch for an hour and just having that break. Now I'm home and I stay home and I kind of work continuously. Despite these changes, some positives like not having an hour commute have emerged. That commute sometimes because it kind of gives me time to think and decompress, but also that's two hours out of my day that I'm sitting in a car, which I realize it's like a lot. Cause now I have a lot more time in my evening than before. Through the positives and negatives, Feeney believes this experience will lead to more opportunities to work from home in the future. Face-to-face -face interaction can be important for office morale, but will more companies turn to remote offices now that employees have shown they can work from home? Reporting from Quincy University, Alexa Lowe, QTV News, Quincy. Hi, I'm Abigail Moore reporting from my car outside of WGEM. 
The coronavirus has impacted students of all ages, especially those seniors who were hoping to experience some of their last. I spoke with my sister, who is currently a senior at Quincy Notre Dame High School, who says she's extremely upset she doesn't get a normal senior year. This was me crying after our state win. Really cute. <laughs> Claire Moore had so many expectations for her senior year of high school. That's because she's watched three siblings go through it and graduate. And finally, it was her turn. A big part is because I'm the youngest. That sounds weird, but I've seen you go through it. I've seen Colin, I've seen Aaron, and I've sat through all of those same ceremonies. And I've been like, oh, I can't wait until I walk across that stage. I can't wait until I have my turn to do this. I can't wait until I get my diploma. The final senior year staples that her siblings got to experience, she realizes she won't get to. She was most looking forward to attending prom with her friends. Even if you don't like dances, it's something that you get to look back on whenever you're older with your family and show them your prom dress, show them everything that you went through, and it just stinks that I don't get to do it. Um, I actually was going to wear my Nana's dress that she wore to her prom, which was so cool. Like, she got to wear it to her prom and I was going to wear it to mine. Aside from experiences, she says her and her classmates have had to adjust to online learning. She's worried this pandemic will continue long enough to affect her first few months of her college experience as well. I'm going to be playing tennis at Loris College next year, but if this pandemic goes on for quite a bit longer, I won't be able to play tennis a lot and therefore play at Loris. Um, and Loris is four hours away from here, so if anything were to happen, I would have to stay home. I couldn't just keep driving back four hours there, four hours from. While waiting for answers, she keeps herself busy by reading daily. Abigail Moore, QUTV News, Quincy. Um, but I have like a bunch of these devotionals. Bar. After a nine-month deployment in Afghanistan, soldiers from the 82nd Airborne Division are ready to see their families. However, COVID-19 has other plans. Soldiers spend their deployment waiting for the homecoming ceremony when they can finally see their families again. But after this deployment, families were not allowed to see their soldiers when they arrived at Fort Bragg. Instead, soldiers were put under quarantine for 14 days. The virus has also forced the military to take away post-deployment leave. I'm excited for the virus to be over with so I can go home, see my family, and go to my wedding. It is unknown when the soldiers will be allowed leave to return home. However, they are hopeful that they will get to see their families soon. Raven Ash, QTV. Hi, I'm Abigail Moore reporting from my car at WGEM. During this global pandemic, nobody is safe and we all have family or know somebody who may be more affected than others by this coronavirus pandemic. My cousin Evan Moore has been quarantining in Hannibal with his father for nearly four weeks now. Evan suffers from an autoimmune deficiency that he's had to deal with his entire life, meaning the impact of this coronavirus could potentially be deadly for him. Due to his safety, his mother and sister have had to quarantine elsewhere. I mean, if he gets it, his immune system isn't isn't going to help him or like be able to fight off the uh, virus at all. And um, with his like people, even with the flu can like die from this, like from die from like influenza and stuff. So this because of how serious it is, like death was like the main thing, like hospitalization, like we wanted to avoid. His family believes that once this virus blows over, he will need to quarantine himself a little longer. But they say he stayed positive about his experience. He's had a good attitude because he understands how dangerous it is for him. Like before when he was quarantined, um, he was making sure that like I wasn't going out and hanging out with people. He was making sure his girlfriend wasn't going out and hanging out with people. Like he was even telling other his friends, everyone like, don't go out, don't go out. Not because he was having FOMO, but because he knows how serious this is. The family is planning on reuniting when the stay at home orders for Illinois and Missouri are lifted. Even then, they are unsure. Abigail Moore, QUTV News, Quincy. I'm Shane Holsey, coming to you from Wentzville, Missouri. Michele Barletta is a goalkeeper for the QU men's soccer team, but right now, he's in his native South Africa, where the entire country is under lockdown for at least the next week. After finding out QU's spring break had been extended, Barletta only had a few days to catch a flight, or else he would not have been able to get home. No flight would be let in and out of South Africa um, starting on the Wednesday, which meant that I had to get home before then if I was going to come um, going to come home. So at the moment, it was kind of up in the air whether or not I was going to be coming back home um, or not, because we didn't want to really jump to make any any decisions. 
Barletta boarded a flight out of Quincy that Monday morning, then flew from Chicago to Dubai and Dubai down to Johannesburg. The trip went smoothly, except for an interesting encounter at the airport in Chicago. Just wanted to take a picture of how empty it was. Um, so I put my phone out and took a, took a picture, took a couple of pictures. Um, and I was approached by a security, like a security official, I guess, and a, and a policeman as well. And they said to me, you've got to delete those pictures now and we've got to watch you and make sure that you delete them. You're not allowed to take any pictures. So that was kind of interesting. The lockdown in South Africa, it's a real lockdown. Residents are only allowed to leave their homes for emergencies. So the streets are all but empty. You're not, you're not allowed to leave the house um, unless you're going to uh, any essential services. So unless you're going grocery shopping for food or uh, going to get health care or medical care or something like that. So the only thing open really is grocery stores, um, clinics and, and, and hospitals. They're, everything else is, is shut down completely. Everything's closed. Barletta is optimistic that things will eventually get better, but he's also realistic. I'm pretty optimistic that things in terms of like at least South Africa, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, 21 day lockdown, once that 21 days is over, I can go out, I can see my friends still obviously be responsible, but at least I can see my friends I haven't seen in a while and that type of thing. But realistically, in the back of my head, I'm saying, I don't know if 21 days is enough. I think the government's going to extend, going to extend it. Um, and just generally, I think uh, all over the world, it's going to be, it's still going to be a while till we overcome this. Marletta has been staying busy as much as he can watching Netflix, helping out around the house, keeping up his soccer skills, trying his best to stay in shape. But if he keeps up his newfound hobby for much longer, it might be a little harder to stay in shape. I've been baking as well, which is something I never thought I'd do. But anyway, I've done that a couple times. Man, those cookies look good. Might have to see if we can bring a batch or two when we go back to school. Reporting from Wentzville, Missouri, Shane Holsey. TV News. I'm Alex Abishan, coming to you from Hermitage, Missouri. We face a great challenge in this COVID-19 pandemic, but there are greater challenges out there. One of the greatest challenges you can face in life is the passing of a loved one, and I had to quite recently. Two weeks ago, I got a phone call from my mother that my grandmother had passed away in hospice care in Quincy. My mother and my aunt were the only two allowed to go visit her, and they had to wear N95 masks when they went to see her. It was quite a difficult experience. Um, I had not been able to uh, see my grandmother since almost December, and it felt like she really wasn't gone, and it still does, because I haven't seen her in so long. I spoke to my brother about what he thought about the whole experience. Well, the truth is, it's odd. It's almost like it didn't kind of happen because in today's world, you know, we're so used to having a service and stuff after someone passes away, and we can't do that right now. I spoke to a funeral director at O'Donnell Cookson Funeral Home in Quincy, who was handling my grandmother's services, about what the funeral process looks like now. And he told me that they got news down from Governor Pritzker that you couldn't have any more than 10 people at the funeral, and that may even go down to five soon from what he tells me, as well as some people have chosen to have um, online services as well, where only the immediate family is there, and then others Skype or Zoom in, and then um, others have chosen to do what my family chose to do, which is just push the funeral back until later in the year, which uh, we are going to do, and we expect to have my grandmother's funeral sometime in July. And it's, it's very difficult. It definitely messes with the grieving process because it just it goes on for so long. And when you haven't you know, seen that person in quite some time, you're, just, you're not really sure how to feel about it. You're, you're sad, but you just don't understand. So I urge all of you, out there. If, 
it may be difficult going back home and spending time with your family and trying to acclimate and get along. But give your mother a hug. Shake your father's hand. Tell your brother, your sister, your grandmother, your cousin that you love them because life is so short and you only have so much time here. And this pandemic that we're going through right now is a perfect example of that. You never know what's going to happen. So always take the opportunity to tell the ones you love that you love them. A former St. Louis politician is sharing her blessing on social media. Casey Star Long, formerly known as Casey Star Triplet, has been making an impact on Facebook selling face masks. She says the idea came from a friend. A friend called me one day and she said, hey, I need a favor. And I was like, okay, sure, I can help you. She said, I need 10 masks and I need them today. And it was really... I, I'm going to say it was God who spoke through me to say yes, because ideally I would have been like, no, I don't want to make masks. I just do skirts. I just do women's clothing. I, I don't want to get into the mask making business. But I really believe that God spoke through me and I said yes. The former alderman stepped down from her position in 2012 and in 2014 it was revealed that she was using her campaign funds for personal use. After paying restitution, Casey went on to start an online boutique, establish a new ministry with her husband, Alfred, and publish three books. She wants the boutique to be an opening for second chances. As far as the future and some of the things that I really want to do um, is I want to create a manufacturing uh, business um, that works alongside such a lady online boutique to hire men and women coming out of prison, to teach them how to sew and um, also to hire them so that they can make the mask, they can make the other items um, that will be set, sold in the boutique, and also to really do small batch manufacturing for other companies. Um, some uh, businesses have talked to me about doing wholesale orders or bulk orders. Um, so having a manufacturing facility where people are hired, where people are trained, um, where people are able to be given a second chance to start careers and make a livable wage, you know, those are some of the things that are on my heart to move into this next phase. On her website, suchaladyonlinebutique.com, you will see the fabric face mask going for $15. There are 11 different designs, and they're also in sizes for adults, toddlers, and children from 5 to 7. Reporting from St. Louis, Missouri, I'm Reggie Austin, QTV News. QTV reporter Chloe Nye is still under quarantine in Australia. She talked to her neighbor who traveled from New York City to Australia in early March. Rhea Larkin tested positive for the virus. She has also been under quarantine. Unable to leave the house, she watched her son get married over Zoom. Do you know when they set up the wedding? Like, because they moved it, didn't they? It, it was a week, gonna be a week later? Yeah, it was gonna be a week later. Um, and they started since they're only allowed five people, they'd bring it forward because his work, he only had a couple of days of work left and they said, take it off in case they went further and banned weddings altogether, which is that? Yeah, or just like the whole um, coming back early um, and then your experience once getting back. Yeah, so we came back a uh, week early, changed our flights, and then by the time we got back, we were part of the group that had to go straight home and stay in home isolation for 14 days, so we did that. Thank goodness you weren't the ones that had to go into a hotel. <laughs> and um, So that was on Thursday and we arrived back. And on the Sunday, I started developing symptoms of a cough and then a temperature. And I've been sick ever since, to varying degrees. <laughs> so what have you been doing while you've been in isolation? Um, well, I didn't do a lot for a week or more because I was feeling quite sick. So I was kind of lying around a lot and dozing off, but I'm doing crosswords and reading and, um, watching a few of the free streaming things like the Met Opera that we were supposed to go to New York, 
has now some streaming their operas free. So I've watched one of them. And the New York Philharmonic has um, watched one of their symphonies that they streamed. And also they have lots of little videos of the musicians practicing at home, which has been cool. Thank you for watching QTV News this week. Stay up to date with QTV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.